What is going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well and had a happy holiday. Today, we're going to be doing a retrospective look of sorts at L.A. Noir on the PC, which I think most of us can agree did not launch in the greatest state just over 10 years ago. That's right. This game came back, came out back in May of 2011. It was locked to 30 frames per second, which was probably the biggest complaint from PC gamers. I think even if it was locked at 60, I think a lot of people could have forg forgiven uh, the release of Ellie Noir on PC being locked at 60 frames per second, uh, but it was 30. And there were some efforts to, you know, uncap the frame rate or cap it to 60 instead of 30, but it introduced a lot of issues uh, with the animations and other parts of the game, certain quests uh, not being completable at all unless you disabled it and went back in and played it. Um, but surprisingly, actually, a lot of these, there's a few different mods out there that accomplish this, but I will link down below to GitHub to the best one that I found. Uh, because it actually just had a very recent release of an updated version of it back in September of 2021. So just three months ago, um, they are still releasing updates to uh, this mod to uncap the frame rate. And as I said, I was able to play at 120 frames per second, pretty much locked. And I'll also link to a tutorial uh, on YouTube here, which I found helpful to get this up and running. But it's pretty, pretty darn simple. You basically download the zip file, extract it, and then copy the DLL file over into the game folder on Steam, or if you have it on Rockstar through Rockstar, or if you pirated it wherever you installed the pirated copy of the game, it'll work on any one of them, honestly. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you can save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for just $19.50, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode on Windows 10 and uh, take advantage of that. I couldn't live without it. And if you shoot over there right now, you can save 25% off, hit the buy now button, and then put in my code JP25 at checkout. I'll walk you guys through the process right now so you can see how much money we're saving and how to go ahead and install this on your Windows 10 PC. That brings our price down to $14.62, total of savings of almost $5 using that JP25 code, which will work for any software products over there. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on Submit Order and select your payment mode of choice, which for me personally is PayPal, and then I'll go ahead and complete the checkout by clicking on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page and it will update in a matter of seconds or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and typing the word activate. When you see that, activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So outside of the initial release of L.A. Noir, which I played initially back on the Xbox 360, like I said, just over 10 years ago, I played this game to completion on the Xbox 360, and I enjoyed it immensely. It was definitely a very different from a lot of the games that were out there at the time, especially from Rockstar and their open world games. And it is, you know, it's still an open world game from Rockstar, but it's a little bit more uh, linear in terms of its narrative. There's not really a whole lot of reward for exploration or anything like that. You're basically driving from objective to objective and, uh, you know, basically solving crimes and all that stuff set in, what is it, the 1940s, 1950s in, in L.A. Uh, your play is Cole Phelps, a war veteran and hero, and uh, work your way up the ranks from, you know, being a flat foot, you know, <laughs> just a patrol officer and eventually becoming a murder detective and solving crimes that way. And the facial animations for the time were uh, truly groundbreaking, and they still look really good today, the facial animations. Uh, and that is part of the gameplay element. It's not just for graphics and looks. It's actually part of the gameplay and being able to tell if people are lying and stuff by you know the way their eyes move or if they shift it, you know their weight in their seat or something like that. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting game, and... We haven't we haven't really ever seen anything like it before, and we really haven't seen anything like it since. Uh, so it kind of just kind of it really just kind of stands on its own. And the uh, yeah, the unlocking the frame rate, honestly, like I said, is very very simple. Uh, as I said already before, I'm going to leave a link down below to a video tutorial 
as well as the GitHub page where you can grab uh, the latest release, which you're seeing all the gameplay was captured just earlier today. Uh, this 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 patch also does force the game into DirectX 11, which presumably is having some uh, benefits in the game. And honestly, there was only one issue uh, that I met, that I noticed while playing the game, and that is that the car steering is more sensitive than it really should be. And that was in the README file uh, for the game. So I, I was looking at I looked at that, and it is de that was definitely the thing that that stood out to me. Uh, as really the only issue with the game, but even with the the, the steering being super duper sensitive, uh, I played on mouse and keyboard. You're you know you may have varying degrees of success there if you play with a controller instead. Uh, but playing with mouse and keyboard, it was very very sensitive. But I felt like it wouldn't be that you know game breaking for me honestly. I feel like it's something that you can kind of work to get used to and sort of account for. And this game isn't really all about driving anyway. I mean, it's not like a Grand Theft Auto where you're... I mean, you definitely do drive around a fair bit going from objective to objective, but I don't really... Th I can't really recall back when I originally played the game really needing any precision driving maneuvers or anything like that. You're just kind of driving around from objective to objective. Uh, so, like I said, it's not really game-breaking, but it is there. It was the thing that stood out most to me. Other than that, didn't see any other real issues with the animation, the facial animations and everything. Uh, still looked as good as, you know, I remember them looking and I even went back and looked at some uh, videos and stuff like that to kind of just compare for my own curiosity to see if everything sort of looked correct uh, with the framer uncapped and I'm happy to report that it did. Um, now, you know, visually, the game still looks pretty damn good. It doesn't look that bad, honestly, for a 10-year-old game. I think the graphics on this game hold up quite well. Uh, that is, for the exception of the textures, there are some textures in this that are just downright awful. Like, mostly, actually, I was surprised that uh, the facial textures and, like, hair and stuff like that on the bodies were uh, some of the some of the worse, worser, worse, worse textures in the, 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 not as good textures in the game. Uh, I would have thought, you know, with as much attention to detail that they put into the animation of this game, and, uh, particularly the facial animations of the game, I thought the facial textures and, and like the bodies and the hair and stuff like that would have been a lot better. At least in my memory, um, they were a lot better. But yeah, after playing through it here on PC, 4K, you know, max settings, there's not a ton of graphics options in this game, not a lot of tweaking to be done. And if you're running any sort of modern hardware, chances are you won't really need to get in there and adjust everything. You can pretty much run the game maxed out on any graphics card, depending on the resolution you play, obviously. But if you're playing on a modern card, you shouldn't have any issues running this game maxed out and getting over 60 frames with the uh, the GitHub mod uh, thrown into the game folder. So yeah, for me, it was pretty much locked 120. There was a couple times where I saw it come down to like maybe like one t like into the one teens, like 110, 111-ish, like around there. But I don't think it was really necessarily, uh, you know, the game that was too hard to run or anything. I just... I don't know, I just think it was just the optimization of the game engine and stuff like that, and the, the GPU was definitely not getting fully utilized, nor the CPU. The CPU most of the time I saw was around like maybe 10 to 15% usage. Uh, so actually surprisingly demanding for a 3080 Ti, you know, 4K and everything, so it's to be expected. But the, uh, yeah, the GPU usage wasn't really, wasn't really a factor there, and uh, it ran very well. And the VRAM usage, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I don't think I saw the VRAM usage go over one gigabyte. I can't remember the last time I saw VRAM usage this low in a video game. And it actually, like I said, it actually looks pretty damn decent. I do wish there were some more mods out there. I really do. I tried looking around to see if there was some reshade um, stuff you can download and it will kind of mess with, uh, you know, color saturation, lighting and all that, but nothing really too drastic. Uh, I really would just love a texture overhaul mod for this game. That would be absolutely fantastic. I only looked around a little bit online earlier, uh, right before playing the game, and I couldn't find anything. I just saw a lot of people uh, kind of in the same surprise as me that there weren't a ton of mods out there uh, for L.A. Noir with as popular as it was when it came out, and the PC version not being that fantastic compared to other, other games, uh, particularly Rockstar games, which tend to usually be okay. Okay, not great, but okay. Um, the recent trilogy withstanding, but pretty much every platform got shafted on that one. Um, but I really do wish there was some more mods out there, but it seems like the game has kind of been forgotten about, apart from the people still updating their the frame rate cap mod over on GitHub. So that's nice to see that some people actually do still care and are working to 
uh, sort this game out. I think this could definitely do with a remaster. I really wouldn't need a whole lot because, the, I mean, the animation stuff is, is all there. Um, some of the gun, the gun aiming the guns and the controls in that sense are a little bit wonky on mouse and keyboard. You can kind of tell that it was made to be played with a controller with like a lock-on aiming system like most Rockstar games have. Uh, with controllers, it pretty much locks onto the target and you shoot. So the aiming felt a little floaty, but again, this isn't really a game where you're going to need a lot of precision aiming when you're shooting. And then like same for the cars, you don't really need a lot of precision with it. Uh, it's more just an interactive story more than anything with a, with a lot more control than something like, uh, say, Heavy Rain or Detroit Become Human. It's kind of similar to those games in a way. I would say Detroit Become Human actually is like the closest game we've seen to this because in the sense that it is like a detective game and um, that, but you definitely have a lot more control uh, in this of your character and being able to go around the world than you do in something like that, which is very, very uh, just, you have to, this is like an area you can be in and that's pretty much it. This is very much an open world game. So if you haven't played LA Noir, I'd say it's worth uh, downloading again and try or, or picking it up for on the cheap. Like, I mean, like five, if you can get it for five bucks or if you see it in the future uh, after I release this video, maybe it's free or something. Maybe Epic will give it away or Rockstar will give it away. Uh, I actually got my copy on Rockstar for free a while ago. I think they were giving away a free game like around the time Red Dead, Red Dead 2 came out, I think it was. And you were able to pretty much pick any game off of the list. And I picked this one because it was like the only game from them on PC that I didn't own and even had a mild interest in playing. And it's taken me this long to actually go ahead and pick it up. So overall, though, I'm pleased with, you know, being able to play the game now. I, I was really enjoying, you know, getting back into the story and playing through the missions and all that stuff and trying to remember, um, you know, where all the clues are and everything. So performance-wise, I'm happy with it as long as you mod it and everything. Uh, the vanilla version of the game, though, is still going to be pretty crap, locked at 30 frames per second. I'll be 100% honest about that. Um, I really just wanted to do this video to talk about that patch, the mod, whatever you want to call it, that's over on GitHub, and kind of make people aware of it, because if you've never played this game because of the 30 FPS cap, I would say it's worth looking into now uh, using this mod, which could not be easier uh, to install. Like I said, you literally just download the zip file, extract it, copy the DLL file to where the game folder is, and that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do anything else. You don't need to tweak any options with it. Nothing. It just unlocked the frame rate uh, for me, and I had VSync turned on in the driver on a 4K 120Hz monitor, so that's why it was locked at 120 for me. Uh, but otherwise, it would seemingly be completely uncapped. So, awesome. I love, I love the mod. Great work to the people that are... Uh, Working on that, uh, like I said, links to it are going to be down below as well as a video that shows you how to install it. And uh, hope you guys all have a fantastic day and a happy new year. And I'll catch you next time for another video.